What is up everybody? We're in my living room right now and that is because today's video is about my complete Dragon Ball Z collection. Just kidding, it's actually about my home server, which is right here. And I know what you're thinking, shouldn't your home server be in a closet somewhere or like your office or literally anywhere else? Probably, and there's a reason for that because this is my home server slash living room gaming slash VR setup. In a previous video, we actually used my VR setup to make a super immersive racing simulator. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. But what I wanna to do today is talk about the specs of my home server, why I actually have one, and what I'm actually running on it. So let's get that done. All right, here she is. Here he is. Here's my gender neutral home server slash living room gaming slash VR PC. So let's rewind a couple of years. I initially created this because I wanted to get into VR. So I bought an HTC Vive Pro from a guy on Craigslist because I thought VR was so cool and I really wanted to get into it. But now I only play two games really. First one is Beat Saber, which is essentially Guitar Hero meets lightsabers meets raid music. It's actually really fun if you're into those types of games. The second is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, which is a game that is specifically designed to make you hate the person that you're playing with, which is a bomb defusal game where one person has the manual for how to defuse the bomb, and the second person actually has the VR goggles on and is looking at a bomb on a table with a whole bunch of different puzzles all while the clock's ticking down and making you super stressed. First module is the hieroglyph one. Roger that, what are you looking at? Three-pronged trident, a C with a dot in the middle. Looks like a smiley face. That's actually really fun, try it out. Another reason why I wanted a home server was for Plex. And for those of you that don't know what Plex is, Plex is essentially a home media server that you can share with anybody in the world. So it's like your own personal Netflix, which reminds me, the main reason why I wanted Plex was because they were taking the office off of Netflix, which is the last straw. I'm taking matters into my own hands. Can't take the office away from me, from us. The world needs the office, except Toby. So this gender neutral entity holds all my Plex TV shows, movies, even music and pictures. So if you want a place to store all that, I recommend Plex. My dad is actually probably wondering where his band of brothers is. So, so those were the two main reasons why I wanted a home server. But after getting it, I found a couple more opportunities to utilize this machine. One being a development server for a lot of the websites I develop and mess around with. I actually have a Windows Server virtual machine running on here, which houses the web development stuff that I do. I have a couple of .NET websites running through IIS, as well as a test WordPress site, just to mess around with, because RedAll.com, built using WordPress. Highly recommended. The last thing I kind of use it for is a personal NAS. So, network attached storage. What this is, is my own personal Dropbox, which allows me to access any files from anywhere in the world, no matter where I may be, even though I don't really travel much and I can't travel now anyway. But what it also is used for is for any collaboration efforts. So any contributors to RaidAllo.com, if they wanna share files or contents, we can easily exchange them back and forth using the NAS. I actually have mine set up through Nextcloud, which is a software that I'm running on one of the newest versions of Ubuntu Linux, and everything's free, which is awesome. Which takes me into how I'm actually running all this on one computer. I'm using a software called VirtualBox, which allows me to take the one CPU that's in here and run virtual machines that basically simulate more computers using the single processor that's in here. So this isn't something new. This isn't something rare and crazy. There's a lot of virtualization softwares out there, but I'm using VirtualBox, which is free and has all the features I really need for something as simple as this. All right, so that's the software side, but what am I actually running in here? So for the processor, 
we're running a AMD Ryzen 5 2600, which is a six core, 12 thread CPU, which gives me more than enough power and bandwidth to run the five or so virtual machines I have set up. I'm also rocking 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now this may be overkill, but I wanted enough to where if I was running some memory intensive tasks or if I decided to utilize this as a video editing workstation sometime in the future, I would already have enough RAM to where all my virtual machines and editing needs would be satisfied. Powering the gaming side of everything, we have an EVGA NVIDIA RTX 2070. Now this may be overkill for the limited gaming that I use this for, but it was one of those scenarios where I think I initially had a 1060 or something, and then I made some deals on Let Go or Craigslist and worked my way up to a 1070, and then somehow got my hands on a 2070 and figured, you know, why not put this in my home server? But I will say it runs VR games extremely smooth. Storage, we got a good bit of storage. I wouldn't say it's a lot, but it's enough. So first of all, we have roughly three terabytes of solid state storage. My initial plan was to use this for important files and game files, um, stuff that would need to be accessed relatively quickly and not have to rely on the hard disk array that I have set up, but here we are. So essentially it's four one terabyte solid state drives in RAID 5. So if one drive fails, the entire RAID can be rebuilt without any data loss. So for hard drives, I actually have two six terabyte Western Digital 7200 RPM drives in RAID 1 which essentially means they are mirror copies of each other. So that gives me roughly five terabytes of hard drive space, which I use for all my Plex stuff, as well as some files I wanna transfer on my local network between computers. I also have a single one terabyte drive that I use for my NAS setup. And the reason I did this is because it was much easier to just plug in a single drive and allocate that entire drive to that one virtual machine running Nextcloud. So there's no parity or backups or anything on that, but it's mainly used for collaboration stuff and temporary files. So it's not that big of a deal if that dies. So if we look down here, we can see an HTC Vive wireless adapter card, which essentially allows HTC Vive Pro to operate wirelessly, which I would recommend if you get an HTC Vive Pro because not having that cord draping over the back of your head and kind of stepping on it and you can feel it when you turn and playing VR. It's definitely an awesome thing to have. So that's pretty much it. That was the software as well as the hardware that I use on my home server. And that's basically it. I wanted this to be a quick overview of my home server. And if there's any topics that I discussed in this video that you want more information on or you'd like to see me make another video on going into more detail, let me know in the comments and I'd be more than happy to do an in-depth video on some of these topics. So if you like this, drop a like, hit us up in the comments below, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that bell so you're notified the next time we post something awesome. See you on the next one.